This is Law for Community Workers on the Go, a podcast for community and health workers. My name is Jessica Sullivan and I work in the Community Legal Education Branch at Legal Aid New South Wales. Today we'll be speaking about elder abuse, which is a sensitive and sometimes confronting topic. We want this to be a safe space for listeners, so if you need support at any time, there are services that can help and you can find their contact details in the notes below. Also, if you suspect elder abuse may be occurring to someone in your life, then please speak up. If you're on the Central Coast, you can call the Legal Aid New South Wales Elder Abuse Service directly on 02432456611. And for anywhere else across Australia, please call the National Elder Abuse Helpline, which is 1800 353 374, and they will transfer you to the closest elder abuse service. These episodes were recorded and made on both Darkenjung and Gadigal land. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of these lands and pay our respects to their elders, past and present. We acknowledge that this is Aboriginal land, always was, always will be. Now, if you're a regular listener to our podcast, then you will have become familiar with our style. We generally tell you about a legal problem, what it is, who it can affect, and things you can do to help clients who might be experiencing it. But elder abuse is not a simple legal problem. It's complex, it comes in many forms, it doesn't discriminate across gender or cultural lines, and the abuser is often a family member, a trusted friend or a carer. This series, which we have called Hard Conversations, explores a problem that is challenging and we know there's not going to be one right answer for every person, community or culture. So throughout this series, you're going to hear from lots of different people about their understanding of elder abuse, the ways they think about it in their communities, and how we can start to address it together. So today we have Janelyn Turkelson from Connectability speaking about her work, experiences and thoughts on elder abuse within called communities. So hi, can you just introduce yourself and give us a rundown of the work that you do? Okay, so uh, my name is Janelyn Turkelson and I am the Multicultural Access Project Officer for the Central Coast from Connectability Australia Arena. And my role is to support Commonwealth Home Support Program Service Providers, we call it CHSP, and of course, including their staff to deliver culturally appropriate services. Uh, and community education and awareness to seniors to access support and services. As well as I collaborate, I work with various organizations to support and maintain seniors' volunteers' workforce. Commonwealth Home Support Program is a program that is, uh, it's an entry program to my aged care in order for all the seniors to access uh, services and support while they are staying at home. So one of the program there is, we call it social support individual program. And under this program, which is My Age Care, seniors that who can't drive, they can have this support in order to, to access community services. And this is what we call accompanied activities. And they can also, they are isolated and they need somebody to talk to, to chat to. There is also a program under that CHSP or Commonwealth Home Support Program, which is Home Visit. And the third one is about if they are isolated and there is a phone chat. And then domestic assistance, gardening and, and things like that. Great. Thanks for that. So how do people access this service? For them to access is they need to ring my HK. They need to register my HK 1-800-200-422 or uh, they can go to website or their family, which is the www.myhcare.gov.au. So what is your understanding of elder abuse in cold communities? They are isolated, uh, less interaction um, with people and community and they lost obviously their confidence and very low self-esteem. So they, they don't speak up. And cultural thing as well, that it's an assumption that it's not an abuse. They are my children because we know that, that the statistic is family members. And well, the family with the power of attorney, enduring power of attorney, and the most tricky one is the enduring guardian. When 
we know that during guardian, they can decide where the older person lives. And per my experience, I experienced that, that this elderly, uh, this seniors, she was put in the nursing home without even knowing that that's already the nursing home because she was promised by her um, son that I have a place for you to live. And this is a very nice place, but yeah, because of that enduring guardian, I should say. So those are the kind of experience that it, it's really an elder abuse as we know. Why do you think that children make the choice to stop respecting their elders, their parents, and as you say, as we know, elder abuse is most often done by children or family members. What do you think causes that respect to disappear? That, as you say, is usually so important in many of these called communities. Why do you think that respect is no longer there? That the, the respect is no longer there? That they yeah. can just put elderly any time to the nursing home or just sell their house? Well, that is because they are in a hurry to get their inheritance. And as we know that lifestyle these days is very challenging, it's very competitive. And and and, and the family is just like they, they want to do this. They wanna they wanna achieve that without even working with it. Why would I work hard when my parents got a fortune? So let's sell the house, let's put mom to the nursing home, or let's get mom, you know, money from the bank, or mom, can you can you lend me some money? Something like that. So that's financial abuse, <laughs> you know. So I think that's that's the kind of thing because they are in a hurry to get their inheritance. And why do you think the older people, um, as you said, don't view it as abuse? Because that's cultural. So when you are brought up with that kind of belief, it's about helping. It's a cultural thing that you help your children without even thinking that that's a debt, that they owe you money, and it doesn't matter. You help until up to the last of your penny. So it doesn't matter. That's not an elder abuse because they are my, my children. Who gonna inherit that anyway? Who, to whom I'm gonna give my fortune anyway? But it, yes, that, that will happen, you know, in the future, but it's not gonna be very, very soon because they ended up living with nowhere, nowhere to live. Why do you think it's important for us to be having this conversation? Why do you think elder abuse needs to be spoken about in all communities? It is very, very important. Why it is very important? Because, um, you know, there is a Charter of HK Rights. The Charter of HK Rights, number uh, four, stipulated. It is very clear that seniors may, uh, must live without abuse and neglect. So as a worker, we are governed with that Charter of HK Rights. And we need our seniors to know that this is your rights. And if we don't, you know, we don't talk about this, how can the seniors live without abuse and neglect? And how can they enjoy positive aging and have a very nice journey towards aging? So we need to talk it, to talk about it. I mean, that this podcast is one attempt, I guess, at trying to open up that conversation and have workers be more aware of it and have those conversations with their families and communities and friends and neighbours and everything. But how do you think we can in the future go towards this being something that is spoken about more freely and addressed more freely? Okay. So this podcast, you know, you can disseminate information, you can inform the community. This is community education, community awareness, that when people hear about this, when workers hear about this, when service providers hear about this, that can be the, the, the first step that, all right, there is help out there. This is my rights. And this is not right. This is Australia. And we need to be respected as seniors. We need to be respected. We have all these rights and we need to enjoy life. So I think this is a very good, this is a springboard, I should say, you know, to disseminate information. Having that conversation in the first place is something that's really difficult. If you suspect something, obviously try and address it. But do you have any um, tips or recommendations or just mm -hmm. words of advice, I guess, of how to address that if you suspect something is going on? So number one is that when, when they suspect that there is an elder abuse, for sure they have to know what is elder abuse, definitely, the definition of elder abuse. And when they know that and they, they can say, oh, this is an elder abuse, they need to... What is this? To inform their supervisor. They need to revisit their policy, organization policy, policy about elder abuse. And there is also a New South Wales elder abuse toolkit. 
that can really help them as well. And that's the way how, you know, they can equip themselves or us helps or service provider should uh, look for a training that will help the workers to be equipped when it comes to elder abuse recognition. And it's not about just rec recognizing, but it's about like, what's your action? You recognize and you don't have an action. So nothing happened. So recognize and after recognizing it, then these workers, they can just now put it into action what they're going to do next. Yeah. Yep. So that's the kind of thing. So you run training on the Central Coast kind of area mm -hmm. for organisations like that. Does there yeah. training across New South Wales that, with your organisation? There are 12 of us. It is part of our project, Elder Abuse Awareness. So we, we do trainings in our respective region. So New South Wales, yes. The answer is yes. But I am concentrated with Central yep. Coast and, and the rest of the regions, there are maps there that yep. also are doing. So I do cultural awareness training to, to help service providers staff to deliver serve culturally appropriate service. And then I incorporate with that training, the charter of HK rights that, you know, like seniors out there in needs to live without abuse and neglect, and then be treated with dignity and respect. And then we have also the culturally and linguistically diverse action plan that we need to incorporate, that we need to, to remind and inform the service provider and staff that we are governed when we work with the seniors we are under we are governed with this and the my age care um the age care quality standards i should say it is clearly stipulated there that we really need to deliver the service which is culturally appropriate so yes that's part of of my role and the rest of the multicultural access project worker on the Central Coast. So if people wanted to organize some training for their organization on the Central Coast, what do they do to organize that? Ah, uh, yes, they can just contact me. Um, if they are a CHSP service provider, so I need to be very clear that uh, my role is to help the Commonwealth Home Support Program service provider and staff that yes, they can contact me, connectability uh, 4349. 3700 and yes and I can uh, do the cultural awareness uh, training or workshop. Do you have any kind of case studies or examples of elder abuse that you've come across that you think really changed something for you or changed your perspective or made you see something different or? Yes I think uh, there are so many that's why my brain is just like Yes, <laughs> it's, it's, it's plenty because it's changed because when you talk about elder abuse, the, the, the word elder abuse in some culture, it's offensive because w w why are you thinking that my children are abusing me? Do you think that I, I, I didn't uh, you know, mold them or you know, my upbringing is, is not right? Yeah, so who are you to tell me that? I'm a good mother, I'm a good, we are good parents. And now here comes you are, I don't even know you and you are talking about that some of these perpetrators are my families and my children. So that is a big challenge. Like, okay, hang on a minute, let's sit <laughs> back and relax and think about this, how are we gonna do the approach? So it, it changes because first thing, when I had the training, it's elder abuse. And then we change it, we, we, we talk about it as a, as a network and as, you know, as a group, and then let's change the word. Everybody deserves respect. So when you go, when I go for in contact with people or if they come here to ask help or when I deliver culture, uh, elder abuse awareness, do you think that everybody deserves respect? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we agree with that. Uh, in what way, especially in your family? How, how do you want it to you know, happen? If you say that everybody deserves respect, including you, so in what way? Oh, we need this. We want our children to be this. We want. So it's not about you dictating us. And then later on said, yes, you are right. You are right what you're saying because according to this, so you introduce your academic knowledge and back up that yes, according to this, you're right. But if you will say that according to to these academic scholars or according to the World Health Organization that abuses 
when trust is being crossed and you know you can't in some cultures some culture they are very open to it and they want to listen but some culture now because i was or i am a good mother and in my culture you know i have the i have to make it sure that my children upbringing is is right If we want to help the community out there, we, we're gonna do our research first. We need to do our assignment. What kind of, uh, of cultural background, you know, these people has? But even if you're saying that, okay, you identify the, the cultural background. Let's say, for example, this is a Filipino speaking community, but you can't stereotype them because there are influences already that change already dramatically that they change as the time goes goes by but then you have to do your research all right so is this my research is really correct okay so so do another research again before you you join the group and then after that then yes you can you can deliver the goodies because it's just like delivering vegemite you know why would you deliver vegemite to a filipino group when this filipino group is not they're really eating Vegemite, but do not stereotype them because there are Filipino that eats Vegemite already because they've been in Australia for a long, long time. You know, do our research and assign homework that, all right, do you eat Vegemite? Do you think, have you tried Vegemite before? No, yes, oh, that's the thing, so you can start now. But we can't but just do the assumption that all Filipino are not eating Vegemite. Yeah, that's a great metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, that's I'm brilliant. Doing analogy here, Vegemite, because... I, 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 my husband introduced me to Vegemite or gave me a Vegemite when he came to the he said, yeah, what's that? But when I came to Australia, right, give it a little bit of, you know, smear, just look, oh, yum, later on, it becomes yum. And that's, yeah. no, but that goes on from your metaphor as well. Like, mm. if you just dump a whole bucket of Vegemite in front of someone and say, here, eat mm. this, but if you slowly encourage, like, it's the same thing. If we just slowly start to speak about these things to people, if we slowly start putting those ideas in their minds, like everyone deserves respect instead of, are you being abused, which is mm. like dumping it in front of them. But if you say, do you think you deserve respect? It's like food for thought. And they go, oh, okay. And they mm. start to think and then you check in with them and you come back and slowly, slowly, I guess this is how we exactly. try and make And then that they change. will accept that. So give them the chance to ponder. Just give them like a little bit of sign, like everybody deserves respect. And then they're going to ponder that. They're going to think, yeah. And then you come back and then said, in what way that do you think that you can be respected? How do you want your children, you know, will, will treat you? Oh, I want this, I want that. Because you, you, you're not going to be the expert. They are the expert. And you're not going to be the captain of the boat. They are the captain of the boat. And we as a worker, we are only the passengers. They're the captain. So if we will let them be the captain of their boat, and we will just enjoy so we can have a smooth sailing of our ship. Yeah, so we can give them the ideas. We can provide them the support when they want it and ask for it, but we can't force and we can't demand. No. Very true. Yeah, and it's just like um, when we deliver the, um, form them that there is my age care, there is help out there. And you can just say to them that, look, this is the kind of help. This is Australia. Australia got a lot of resources. You're bringing the plate and said, pick which one do you need? You bring the tray with it. You want this? You want that? Do you think you want this? And if you said, no, no, I'm, I don't want that. All right. At least you know that it's there. Or do you want to take this, this information, put it in your drawer? And then when the time comes that you need it, open your drawer and you got it. So how's that? Because if you put all this information about elder abuse, that's a lot. Well. There is, there is a bag, um, bag of information, and then when you get time, slowly get them, and then, yeah, just put in your drawer anytime you will need it. So, yes, that's the way, because that's based on my experience. So I have to mention, because this is a great opportunity where they can ask help. So number one is you guys legalize abuse service on the Central Coast. So... Four three two four five six double one for the people listening out there. Reach out. Um, I repeat, legal aid elder abuse service on the Central Coast. Four three two four five six double one. Please reach out. And 
There is also New South Wales Aging and Disability Abuse Helpline. Number is 1-800-951-822. Then another one, Age Care Quality Safety Commission. What's their number? 1-800-951-822. And if you need an open, which is to advocate seniors on their behalf, we call it Older People Advocacy Network Open. The number is 1-800-700-600. So we've been advertising this, we've been promoting this. With my experience working with people, they're not very confident in saying that, oh, there are helps out there. If I feel like I need one, we got senior rights services as well, 1-800-424-079. And of course, I, I'm not going to forget, speak my language. Speak My Language has a podcast with different languages, and there is a topic there around elder abuse, which is a cafe conversation. That it's it's really good to visit that. And they they are um, website is www.speakmylanguageradio.org.au. I should remember this. <laughs> and yes, and um, if they need an interpreter because they feel like all right, there is a language barrier. Interpreter is this, the uh, translating and interpreting service, which is 131450. And they can also call me, 4349370. Next ability, yeah, here you go. But as I said, that if they said, oh, there's so many, there's so many numbers out there that I need to, to memorize. So on the central coast, they don't have that um, problem. They just die a legal aid, elder abuse service and that's it yeah 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 mm -hmm. the number been promoting everywhere is the what? elder help number which then transfers so wherever you are across australia if you call that 1-800-353-374 number it transfers you to your local elder abuse hotline number Yeah, and it's the people that we don't see that is that we need to kind of speak to, like people who are already engaging in services and engaged in their community or have a worker. Those are the people who we're already able to access. But we have to think about how to talk to and communicate with those people that are at home who may be, you know, really isolated. How are we trying to tell them that there are services for them? How are they, you know, mm. tell them about their rights? That's our next challenge, I think. Yeah, and before you will go into to those people, you really need a bridge. You really need a bridge to connect the other end, you know, because trust is very important. Once they trust you, uh, they listen to you. But if you will just say, okay, I am blah, 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 and I'm working with blah, blah, they're not gonna listen to you. If you want to deliver, and do this campaign of to reduce elder abuse, we really need to work with other organizations. We can't do it alone by ourselves. And thinking that we are the expert, we are not, because no, uh, no man is an island. We can't do so, no man is an island. So we need to work in collaboration with other organizations, get them involved, because these organizations, they have already groups of seniors. So once you work with them, and then you will visit them every now and then, you join with their projects and dance with them, sing with them. When you deliver that kind of program, it is very easy because they trust you. Not be just visiting that organization once because you are, you are bringing something for them, no. It doesn't work that way. So we really need to help each other and work hand in hand. So I think that's it. And I'm very passionate when it comes to elder abuse, you know, awareness and, you know, campaign. And yeah, so I, I'm very passionate with that. And I help anybody, any organizations in, to the best of my capacity and ability without delay. You know me, when you send me an email about that, straight away. Yeah, and uh, we just work with each other and and uh, help, you know, hand in hand and we can make it. We can, we can help seniors out there who really needs help. Perfect, mm. thank you so much.
There are a lot of voices and opinions to be heard throughout these episodes. We would like to thank everyone who participated and shared their opinions and expertise with us. If you'd like to join the conversation, please send us an email at elderservice at legalaid.newsouthwales.gov.au. And as always, if you or someone you know is experiencing or at risk of elder abuse, then please speak up. If you're on the Central Coast, contact the Elder Abuse Service on 4324 5611. And for all other areas across Australia, you can call the National Elder Abuse Helpline on 1800 353 374 and you'll be directed to your closest service. So until next time, thanks from all of us at the Community Legal Education Branch and Elder Abuse Service from Legal Aid New South Wales.